Hello and welcome to our weaning webinar. This webinar is all about introducing solid foods to your baby. My name is Claire Galway. I'm the Paediatric Health Improvement Dietitian in the Northern Trust and I'm a member of the Public Health Dietitians Group in Northern Ireland. A bit about me, I'm a mum of two. I love going for a good walk on the North Coast, finished off with a coffee and a bun. Just some housekeeping before we get started. This is a recorded webinar so the Q&A function is not available. This is a public webinar covering general nutrition advice for babies, and the advice is correct at the time of recording. If you need one-to-one -one support or advice, please speak with your health visitor or GP. You may be referred on to a dietitian if appropriate, and if it meets the referral criteria for dietetics. This webinar is property of the Health and Social Care Trusts. Here is what we are going to cover during this webinar the what, why and when of weaning, suitable foods and those to avoid, what you will need in terms of equipment, how and when to introduce foods, the difference between choking and gagging, allergies, vitamins and the healthy start scheme, portion sizes and further resources. Just a wee heads up at this point, we cover rather in-depth information for the first part of this webinar and it moves into the lighter more practical information about halfway through. As this is a recording, it might help you to jump about to different slides and listen in a way that makes most sense to you. So what is weaning? It is introducing your baby to solid foods alongside their usual breast or formula milk. When babies are born, they only need breast milk or formula milk to meet their nutritional needs. But as they get older, they need other sources of nutrition to help with growth and development. At this stage, food comes in alongside their usual milk and not to replace it. This is why weaning is also known as complementary feeding because it is a gradual process. So why do we wean? As I mentioned, babies need food to make sure they get the right nutrition to help them grow and develop well. Babies and infants have high energy requirements compared to their small size. They have a small body size and therefore we need to make sure that the food we give them is nutritious and energy dense. Good weaning practices go towards good eating habits and patterns for life. Healthy eating prevents and reduces the risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Healthy food can also help to ensure healthy teeth and a healthy mouth. Another reason why we introduce solid foods to our babies is so that they can learn new skills. Babies will learn from us about how to eat and mealtime routines. They will also develop eating practices like biting and chewing and swallowing, which in turn helps to develop the muscles that are needed for speech development. We'll look now at the key nutrients that babies and infants need for growth and development. Protein is essential for the growth, maintenance and repair of body cells. Iron is, a, is an important component of haemoglobin, which is found in red blood cells and carries oxygen around the body. Iron is important for brain and nervous system develop, development and it helps the body to fight infections. Calcium is needed for strong bones and teeth, also to regulate muscle contractions and ensure that blood clots normally. Vitamin D helps the body to absorb calcium from food. And fiber is important for a healthy digestive system and reducing the risk of type two diabetes and heart disease. So when should we start weaning our babies? The World Health Organization and Department of Health recommend exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. Whilst it is recommended to wait until around six months, there is a need to not delay beyond this, as it could lead to nutrient and energy deficiencies. There is also evidence to show that babies who aren't offered lumpy food before nine months are more likely to be fussy eaters. So we need to be working on moving through different textures. For example, from puree to lumpy to mashed food. Why should we wait until around six months? Breast milk or formula milk meets your baby's needs until then. Around the six month mark, the iron stores that baby has from mum begin to dwindle and they cannot get enough of this from milk alone. Also around six months, your baby is likely to be showing the signs of readiness for weaning, able to sit upright, hold their head steady, and also able to swallow food and not be pushing it back out. <coughs> Wait until around six months 
means a reduced risk of asthma, eczema, digestive problems, allergies and obesity later in life. You may have heard from friends or family that having a hungry or bigger baby, a baby who wants extra milk or is waking during the night or chewing their fists are reasons to start giving solid food. Unfortunately, these are not good reasons to wean early. In some cases, you may be advised by your medical team to introduce solids earlier than six months. For example, if baby is suffering from reflux, if their growth is faltering, or if they are at high risk of developing an allergy. No matter what, do not give food to your baby before 17 weeks, as this puts them at higher risk of allergy and infections. Baby's digestive and kidney systems are still developing. So foods to give your baby from six months. It's good to start off with vegetables and fruits for a few days, but after this, baby can and should be offered a wide variety of foods, including potential allergens such as egg or peanut containing foods. As I mentioned, from around six months, baby should be offered a wide variety of foods. They can eat whatever the rest of the family is eating. However, there is a short list of foods that need to be avoided for your baby until they reach the age of one. Under the age of one, it is recommended that babies have less than one gram of salt a day. This is minuscule and means that we cannot afford to give babies salty foods or to add salt into their meals. Honey should be avoided because it contains bacteria, which can produce toxins in baby's intestine, leaving, leading to infant botulism, which is a serious illness. Babies can have eggs, and as long as they have a British Red Lion stamp, they can be lightly cooked, like in a scrambled egg, or raw in homemade mayonnaise. If they do not have this stamp, they must be hard boiled and well cooked until both the white and yolk are solid. This goes for duck, goose, and quail eggs too. Raw shellfish, and also shark, marlin, and swordfish should be avoided due to the risk of food poisoning. Babies should not have unpasteurized cheese. We need to limit sugar intake for tooth health. And finally, there is also a ch choking risk with whole nuts. Nuts in other forms, such as in a smooth nut butter or very well crushed are fine. Moving on to allergy. I know this has been really heavy stuff so far, so bear with me. Food allergy is when the immune system mistakes a protein found in food as a threat. A food allergy reaction can be immediate, within minutes and up to two hours, or delayed 24 to 48 hours after having the food. Call 999 for help if you suspect an anaphylactic reaction, which would be like breathing difficulties. <clears throat> Common symptoms seen in, a, in an immediate food allergy include coughing or wheezing, an itchy sensation inside the mouth, throat or ears, a raised itchy red rash, some call this urticaria or hives, swelling of the face, eyes, lips and tongue. Sometimes there might be vomiting. Symptoms linked to a delayed allergic reaction tend to affect the gut or skin. For example, worsening reflux, loose frequent stools and ongoing mucus in stools. Food is not always linked to the flare up of eczema. Your child is at higher risk of food allergy if they already have moderate to severe eczema, eczema that began in the first three months of life, or if they have already got a confirmed diagnosis for food allergy. This child might benefit from early introduction of some of these potential allergens like egg and peanut. Here are the 14 main allergens in the UK. All 14 can be introduced to your baby from around six months and delaying introduction past 12 months can in fact lead to the increased risk of a food allergy. If there is someone else in the family with an allergy, this alone does not make your baby at higher risk of an allergy. However, it will be important as you introduce potential allergens to your baby that the other family member is kept safe. You could ensure this by trialing the food with baby whilst the family member is out of the house and using a spoon to feed baby to make sure that the food is actually eaten. When introducing any of these foods, do so one at a time. Let's look at introducing egg and peanut. It is important that we do try these foods with baby and then if deemed safe, continue to keep them in the diet. For example, you have given baby fruit and vegetables 
when they are ready to expand their diet. Try egg for the first time. Hard boil an egg, mash it, and mix one quarter teaspoon in with another already liked and safe food, for example, potato, and then spoon feed this to baby. Watch for symptoms. If there are no symptoms, then you can increase the amount of egg you give over the next few days. If baby is not interested in trying it, do not force them and just try again on another day. For peanut, again, a quarter teaspoon of smooth peanut butter mixed in with mashed banana <coughs> and maybe thinned down with milk or water. On this day, ensure you're not introducing another potential allergen at the same time. When trying any of the rest of the 14 allergens, use a small amount, ideally earlier in the day, then wait a few days before introducing another new allergen. Again, gradually increase amounts of these foods once they're accepted and keep them in the diet. A final point on this, if you think your child has a food allergy, definitely seek a professional diagnosis, as cutting out foods unnecessarily is potentially harmful. Okay, on to the more practical stuff. This is the equipment that you'll need for weaning. There is not a lot and it doesn't have to be fancy. So you've got a shallow, a shallow bowl and spoons that baby can hold. Um, nice soft spoons, small Tupperwares or ice cube trays for sharing small or for storing small portions, a high chair to keep babies secure and upright. A sieve can be really helpful and a spoon or fork to push and mash foods through. Um, and this is really helpful in the early days. A uh, free flowing cup for water at mealtimes and a blender to help to get foods down to the right consistency. Are some plates and bowls and things better than others? There are a lot of these plates about at the moment um, and they do look nice, but you don't need them. The different sections are not to represent portion sizes, but can be a helpful reminder to include a few of the different food groups to make up a, ba a balanced meal. Just one more point in that. It is a good idea to encourage baby to hold a spoon um, and attempt to feed themselves right from the start. And a nice soft spoon that is short enough for the baby to hold and put in their mouth is great. So what is the difference between gagging and choking? It is a common misconception that these are the same thing. Gagging is extremely common and definitely normal. When babies are starting on solids, um, it is in fact a safety mechanism to prevent them from choking. It doesn't actually bother babies too much, but it can be a very stressful thing for parents to witness. Being aware of this makes it easier to handle. So if your baby is gagging, it is likely that their face will turn red. They'll usually make a loud coughing or retching noise. Their eyes will water um, and then they will push the food back out of their mouth themselves. <coughs> Choking on the other hand is when baby cannot get air in. They'll be quiet, unable to cough and this is an emergency. I would highly recommend all parents either signing up to a first aid course via their health visitor or at least watching a good video on YouTube about first aid for babies. Never leave a baby or a small child alone when they're eating. Baby led weaning has become a popular way to feed babies. It means offering your baby only finger foods and letting them feed themselves from the start rather than spoon feeding them pureed or mashed foods you offer a range of finger sized pieces of foods. Some parents prefer baby led, others prefer traditional weaning with purees and mashes, and most people are probably combining a bit of both. There's no right or wrong way. The most important thing is that you're offering a wide variety of food for baby to get all the nutrients they need. If you are going for the more traditional route of weaning, it is important that baby is still offered finger foods as well as spoon feeds to develop chewing skills and texture acceptance. There should be no higher risk of choking with baby led weaning as long as foods are well cooked or soft enough. These foods should be considered or would be considered a high risk for choking. So be careful with um, all of these different foods and how you present them to children. So some tips might be cutting small round foods like grapes and cherry tomatoes into small pieces 
long ways and again. Peel the skin off fruit, vegetables and sausages. Though remember that sausages can be quite high in salt to start with. Remove hard pits and stones from fruit. Remove bones from meat or fish. Soften hard fruit and vegetables such as carrot and apple when first given to your baby from around six months. And you can do that with cooking methods. Whole nuts and peanuts should not be given to children under five years old. Never give raw jelly cubes as these have been known to get stuck in the throat. I'm going to show here a small video about the, how soft a finger food really should be. So as you can see, that food, that broccoli was very, very easily mashed between finger and thumb. And that's exactly what we want uh, to happen to the food whenever it goes into baby's mouth between their gums. And they shouldn't have to work very hard for it to break down like that. So very, very soft finger food to start with. Okay, how to actually introduce food to your baby for the first time. So you choose a food and um, the Department of Health recommend fruit, vegetables or baby rice as good options. Recent evidence is suggesting we use green bitter vegetables or more savoury foods to get baby used to as wide a range of, of flavours as possible <coughs> from the start and not getting them into sweet foods that they already have an innate taste for. And this might help to reduce fussy eating later on. So a calm environment for you and baby. Um, choosing your first food and really aiming on day one for one to two teaspoons at one point during the day. Um, and do these, this for the first few days, just a nice calm time during the day. And at some point during the day, one or two teaspoons um, and you can thin down um, these foods using your usual milk so breast milk or formula milk and hopefully um, introduce the allergen that is cow's milk and you'll be able to use full fat cow's milk from then on if in cooking or um, thinning foods down. Here is a short video um, about food prep and a quick look at the idea of batch cooking. So after a week or so, we need to be trying to get good iron sources in. Just think about your usual meals at home. And if you're cooking these, <coughs> maybe leave some aside for baby. We'll move um, from just making a pea puree, for example, to adding some potato to that, and then some chicken too. Um, nice ways to get soft finger foods into the diet might be through banana or toast with plenty of butter or really, really well cooked vegetable sticks that will just squish between the finger and thumb. Um, it might help in some cases, um, if you've got a very slippy uh, finger food to add up some ground up cereal or seeds to this and that can help baby to hold the food. From seven months, baby should be eating all the same types of foods that you eat, except for that little list of foods to avoid. Um, we're also trying not to give them too much fiber and making sure that they're getting um, full fat products. Um, at this point, maybe around seven months, aiming for five or six teaspoons 
two to three times a day. Don't worry if you're not quite there. Um, I would encourage you to start off with one or two teaspoons on those very first days and work your way up through one meal up to five or six teaspoons. And then for the second meal of the day, start down at one to two teaspoons again, build your way up to five or six teaspoons. And then for the third meal, starting again at one to two teaspoons and working your way up and only move on to the next meal if you feel that baby is ready for it. Um, also around six months, you can be using water that's come straight from the tap. Um, so it's a nice idea to get a free flowing cup on the go with meal times with water in it for baby to get used to. And always be encouraging self-feeding, whether they're using a loaded little spoon for themselves or finger food. And at nine months, hopefully at this point, be up to three meals a day, still very much breastfeeding on demand or having five to 600 mils or 18 ounces of formula a day. And then moving um, through the texture, still moving to chopped and firmer finger foods and, and still having a good go at self-feeding. And then at 12 months, hopefully there's a good wide variety of foods um, and sharing with the whole family, not having to cook anything separate for your, your baby and infant. Um, also at 12 months, you can be using full fat cow's milk to drink um, and around 350 mils a day would meet their calcium requirements there. And yeah, all the different textures and um, hopefully no more purees or mashes and just chopped foods and finger foods. In terms of drinks, um, continue to breastfeed until at least a year old um, and can move from formula and breast milk to cow's milk at 12 months. And as your baby eats more, they will drink less milk. We really encourage the use of a free flowing cup from six months. This helps with speech development, reduces the risk of tooth decay and improves fine motor skills. And once your baby is one year old, drink, uh, drinking from a bottle should be discouraged. Milk and water are definitely the best drinks in childhood. Milk should be the main go-to drink. Water should be served with meals. Pure fruit juice is an option if it's really well diluted um, and all other drinks should be avoided. From one year old, you can give cow's milk, goats, sheep, coconut, oat and almond milk as a drink, as long as they are full fat, fortified and pasteurized versions. Do not give soya drinks until they're at least two years old and rice milk until at least five. Thought it might be useful here to talk through an example menu for you. So for example, in the morning, you could have any kind of cereal. Ideally, it would be fortified with iron to help with their high iron requirements um, or toast or something like that. At lunch, thinking about getting a variety of the food groups. So a starchy carbohydrate, some fruit and vegetables, um, and twice a day aiming for an iron source um, and protein source. So egg or tuna, mackerel, chicken, ham, lentils, beans, hummus, nut butters, falafels, chickpeas, um, and then your starchy carbohydrates. So any kind of bread source, pasta, rice, potatoes, and fruit and vegetables. At dinner, whatever you're having, having for dinner will hopefully be fine. Or if you have a freezer stash, um, from another night of a, a suitable meal and yogurt, fruit, rice cakes, breadsticks, toast, those sorts of things can be really helpful as snacks throughout the day. Um, just a few wee pictures to, sh to show and remind you that it is going to be a very messy time and we would encourage you to let it be as messy as possible. Um, even though it might be hard work to clean up after, it's really, really good learning for our kids to be able to play and enjoy their food. In terms of storage, um, back to batch cooking for a wee second, this can be really, really helpful if you have time before you get to the six month mark. Um, batch cooking can really um, save you a bit of stress and hassle. Um, <coughs> so I would encourage you to pick some fruit and vegetables to cook, um, puree or mash them and freeze them in small portions. And then whenever you defrost them, you can mix and match them and add some milk or water to thin them down and get them to the right consistency. Also, any meals that you make in the time before it gets to the six month mark that seem baby friendly to you, have good iron and protein sources in them. Um, it's always worthwhile saving some of them in small pots too. So you can store food in the fridge 
for 24 hours or in the freezer for up to three months, just to ensure that your containers are well covered. Um, to defrost um, your little ice cubes of food, you can do that overnight in the fridge or you can defrost them using the microwave in the microwave using that setting, or you can submerge the pot into warm water and that'll defrost them. And then just whenever you're reheating, make sure it's done thoroughly <coughs> and be careful of any hot spots before giving it to baby. If you do use a food that has been defrosted, um, make sure that you throw away anything that is unused this time and um, it can't be reused again. In terms of the difference between homemade and convenience foods, I guess the overall message is to not write, rely on convenience foods because this really helps if you can use homemade food to get your baby used to what your family eats. Um, you can adjust the texture, which is really important for their skills. Homemade cooking is definitely cheaper, but convenience food can be handy if you're out and about. And sometimes it just feels like an awful lot of effort um, to cook from scratch all of the time. So maybe as a backup, but most of the time aim for homemade foods. In terms of vitamins, um, the recommendations are that a breastfed baby should be taking vitamin D drops from birth, and that's 8.5 to 10 micrograms a day. And then from six months onto a multivitamin that contains vitamin A, C and D, and that's 10 micrograms again of vitamin D. And a formula fed baby also needs this multivitamin with A, C and D, but not until they're drinking less than 500 mils of formula a day. <coughs> so some examples of vitamins you can buy out and about would be Abidec, Well Baby and Vitabiotics Well Kid. Just check that the 10 micrograms of vitamin D are there. Oh, also, um, in terms of vegetarian and vegan diets, children can grow and develop normally on a vegetarian or vegan diet, but you just need to give a bit more attention to make sure that their nutritional needs are met. Vegan children will also need to take vitamin B12 supplements. Vegetarian and vegan diets can be high in fiber, and this can lead to lower energy or calorie intake and a reduced absorption of some important minerals like iron and zinc. Um, so speak with your health visitor or pediatric dietitian for advice on a vegetarian or vegan diet for your baby. The Healthy Start Scheme is really worth knowing about if you're receiving certain benefits like income-based job seekers allowance, child tax credit, or universal credit. So you can speak with your health visitor or phone the Healthy Start helpline to get your prepaid card. And this can be really handy um, in allowing you to get liquid cow's milk, fresh frozen and tinned fruit and vegetables, fresh dried and tinned pulses, infant formula milk and vitamins for mom and baby, and getting a bit of money off foods as well, which can be very helpful. In terms of portion sizes, there are no guidelines for under ones, so it's very much being led by baby. Um, I love this infographic from the British Nutrition Foundation. Um, so this is portion um, ideas for one to four year olds. Um, so that might be a helpful place to look just for a guide on how to start and where to start. Between the ages of two and five, we are moving towards the Eat Well Guide. Um, so it might be a helpful idea just to take in what the different food groups are, um, as we do want this kind of variety in our baby's diet. Um, so just being aware of starchy carbohydrates, fruit and vegetables, um, or foods that are good pro or protein and iron sources, and calcium sources. <coughs> so here's just a little picture of nutrition information you can trust. The British Dietetic Association, Better Health, Safe Food, Choose to Live Better and the Public Health Agency. Also please be sure to follow us, subscribe to Public Health Dietitians on YouTube for further nutrition webinars and also some recipe videos are available there too. That is us. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you find it useful. I know there's an awful lot in there, but hopefully you won't be left with too many questions. Do keep an eye on our social media pages for further resources from dietitians and speak with your health visitors if you have any further queries.
Thank you again and all the best on your waning journey. You'll be great.